Hey, this is Andrew Brown and welcome to another video as we are talking about Microsoft certification exams and a recent change they made to their role-based certification. So if we are browsing certifications on the Microsoft Learn website, on the left-hand side, we scroll on down below, we'll check base role-based and these will be any certifications that you probably want like the AZ-104, the AZ-204. This does not affect fundamental certifications because fundamental certifications are not considered role-based. But for these certifications, they're going to give you access to the Microsoft Learn portal while you're taking your exam. So it's going to be an open base exam. So when you are taking the exam, and this is a sandbox simulator, you can find it for, um, if you click through any of these certifications, I'll type in AZ-104. Okay, and you click here on the actual cert. There is a sandbox here. These are sample questions. If you look at the questions, they aren't, <laughs> they're not related to the exam whatsoever. It's just more to experience the, um, what the exam would feel like. And there will be a button down below here. So I would imagine at some point they will add this functionality, um, maybe to the sandbox so that you can experience it. But the idea here is there will be a button called Microsoft Learn. You will click that button and that will bring up this um, window for Microsoft Learn and you'll be able to access Microsoft Learn. I would think that you would not get access to Q&A. In fact, I believe that they say you would not. Q&A is um, Microsoft Learn's um, own Stack Overflow. AWS has their own as well called Repost. Uh, but yeah, Q&A is very active. Microsoft's very good at maintaining this, but people could be dumping in answers in there. And because of the way the exams are, uh, I think that that would be a, a serious issue for cheating. But uh, when I originally saw this announcement, I thought it was just, because when I hear Microsoft Learn, I just think of training. I never think of all the other stuff that's under here. Um, Microsoft loves to put things under umbrellas and it really confuses me. But originally, I did not think that there was access to the docs, but there is. And knowing that, I think that is a great, great addition to exams. I think every provider should do this. AWS should do it. GCP should do it. The Kubernetes exams should do it. Terraform should do it. I think it's a great idea. Um, but the thing is, when you have an open book exam, you have to design your questions to be open book. And the reason you want to do this is that you're trying to get at those higher order question types. So when you have to memorize everything uh, because you're not gonna have access to that information, that are the, those are the type of questions you'll see. Recall, list, name, define, repeat, comprehension, uh, explain, recognize, summarize. Uh, if you look at AWS certifications, they'll use those words a lot. And um, they, you'll see these other things like exam and compare, things like that, but not so much. Or if they are, it's, it's like they can write it in the language, but the question types are the question types. If all you have is multiple choice, then you are limited in terms of being able to push up higher in that lear learning pyramid. So this is the Bloom's Taxonomy by Vanderbilt University Center of Teaching. I have to say that because you have to credit them when we show it to you. But a lot of schools use this as um, a hierarchy of things you want to teach your students, right? You want to get them to the top of the pyramid. And uh, I'm just going to tell you right now that the best way to get there is with manual evaluation and grading. During my boot camp, I was pushing people to this point because People had probably up to apply and nothing really above there, maybe analyze, it depends. Um, and so, you know, during our boot camp, I would be like, hey, I'm going to write these serverless functions in JavaScript, do something different. And so, you know, a boot camper might write them in Rust. And then to get Rust to work with serverless functions in a cloud provider, they would have to create a custom runtime to get them to work. And so that is, um, the best uh, it, best outcome you want for your students is to produce new or original work. Um, and it's hard because that's really hard to do. So I just wanna say that the exams are open book for Microsoft, 
but they are not going to uh, be as effective as they could be because of the nature of Microsoft. And I don't think questions are engineered for, uh, for it to be open book. That's not to say that they aren't going to um, benefit uh, exam takers because the way the way Microsoft exams work, and if we can pull it up here, is that they really focus on doing. And I think this is the biggest problem that Microsoft exams have is that they have a huge focus on doing. And that sounds really bizarre because I usually complain about AWS exams about it being all textbook knowledge and nothing about actually doing the work. And the reason doing is a problem the, the, as a test metric for Microsoft exams is you have to understand the nature of Microsoft and their products and how they're built and how decisions are made. So I feel, or this is my opinion, is that Microsoft is like a, a improv group. They go to businesses, and they try to convince businesses to use Microsoft. And business, the businesses say, well, we need X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. And Microsoft says, oh, we have that, yes, and we can do this. And so they build basically a big checklist of things that uh, they have to have, no matter of the quality, to get buy-in. And so you have these Frankenstein services they're, they're not like AWS or GCP. They're Frankenstein where they just have sprawling features and things like that. And then on top of it, they have, and I, li I like their UI. I think they have the best console, but they have this very rich, complex uh, console. Um, but the issue is that they're providing so much information. They have so much functionality. It becomes very hard to find things. You, there are four or five different ways of doing things. Um, and the responsiveness of their portal is bizarre because the consistency, you'll do something and it, you actually did do it right, but the, the portal is not reflecting that. So you have to wait around and second guess yourself. Um, you could be doing something that's very routine, like scale sets, and, uh, it will work once and then you'll do it again and it won't work for some weird reason. Um, so you'll have to do it a different way. Um, there is one thing on the AZ-204 that they absolutely want you to know how to do. And I remember making a, uh, like a follow along for it, like a lab, and I couldn't get it to work. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm not doing it the Microsoft way. So I followed the documentation because they'll have a tutorial on it. One-to-one, -one, didn't work. Reached out to paid Microsoft support. They couldn't figure it out. I reached out to the person and talked to them that wrote it, the tutorial, and they couldn't replicate. And they didn't want to go back and fix it because they'd have to go and figure out what they did. But they're asking that you know how to do it on the exam, which to me is bizarre. So there's a lot of frustration taking Microsoft exams. They're very frustrating for that reason. Um, and it's very hard to gain confidence in Microsoft. So, you know, I think that doing is not the best angle for them and they could scale it back a lot more. Um, and it's bizarre because Microsoft has the, the largest type of question types on an exam. They have lab technology so they can spin up VMs if they want to. They can do anything. But the engineering of these certifications are... Um, uh, not the best uh, for that regard. But for me as a content creator, somebody that creates study, study exams, I can tell you I make a lot of money on Microsoft exams because of these defects. In fact, my family business, which was repairing Windows machines, we made a lot of money off those because of the fact that Microsoft wants to uh, capture the most amount of folks uh, by offering the most amount of features. And, you know, that's that. Um, often I find that the implementation does not match the documentation. So that's another issue. So, you know, if they're giving you access to Microsoft Learn, I found that I've seen old screenshots, old code, just things that are playing wrong in the docs. And the docs are huge on Microsoft uh, Learn. They're just giant. 
And I think that's really cool, but I don't think they're maintained the level of degree that AWS maintains their docs. Uh, we could complain about GCP. GCP has traditionally not had very good docs, but their services are very simple. So it's not like, and I don't mean simple in a bad way. I just mean that they don't over uh, make them overcomplicated and they abstract away things that you don't need to know. And so that's why I really like, that's why I really like GCP services. AWS does that to some degree, but Microsoft, you know, they are trying to be number one and they're shoving everything in the drawer. Uh, maybe if they become number one one day, then they will, uh, you know, improve quality in that regards. I'm not saying Microsoft is a bad platform. I'm just talking about the nature of Microsoft. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of open book. I think that these questions need to be designed to be open book to best leverage that that feature. Otherwise, it's just another thing in the in the in the stuff that Microsoft can do during their exams that don't that don't add value. I want to see questions engineered specifically for looking at the docs, because if you are a cloud engineer, a cloud administrator, whatever role, whatever role you want to call yourself in cloud, you are constantly checking docs and the idea to go and look at the docs and and to figure that out would be very interesting. But yeah, um, I want to see uh, these open book stuff on AWS. I want to see them on GCP. I want to see them on Kubernetes. I want to see them on HashiCorp certifications. I love the idea of open book and having access to the docs and questions engineered around that. And the best part is, is that because they have done this, I have to code it into my own uh, exam simulator. So I have good reason to do it. So I will have it for all of them here soon enough. But yeah, hopefully that is of interest to you, learning my perspective about this change. Um, tomorrow, we get to talk about Google because Google has made a change to their exams as well. I'll probably shoot the video right after this. I will just take off my sweater so it looks like uh, I'm not wearing exactly the same clothes. But hey, we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.